Let's have a history lesson. If you've ever seen the movie 300, you know that Leonidas and 300 Spartans stood up to King Xerxes of Persia for several days and was able to outlast them until the uh, hunchback traitor found a path through the mountains and eventually the Spartans became surrounded and they were all killed. So what you may not know is parts of that story actually happened. Now, it was fantasized a little bit for the movie, but uh, Persia was very, very interested in conquering Greece at the time. It was around the 5th century BC. The first Persian War started in 490 BC. King Darius decided, hey, Greece is great. I want it. And so he goes and he attacks. And at the time, the two most powerful city-states in Greece were Athens and Sparta. And so they combined forces, and they held off the Persians at the Battle of Marathon, and Darius turned away, defeated. But ten years later, his son Xerxes said, Hey, you know, Dad had a really great idea. I think I want to conquer Greece. And that's where the movie starts. This was the Battle of Thermopylae. Thermopylae, by the way, if you've seen the movie, you heard Leonidas reference several times the hot gates. And that's actually literally what Thermopylae means. Thermopylae is Greek for hot gates. And the reason that it matters is those hot gates is a narrow passageway from the sea that renders the numbers of this Persian army basically useless. If you've seen the movie, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. If you've not seen the movie 300, you really, really need to watch it. And where have you been, you know, for the last 20 years of your life? And shame on you. <laughs> but so in the summer of 480 BC, uh, now there is a little bit of a discrepancy. Leonidas actually led an army of six to 7,000 Greeks from all over the region, including 300 Spartans. So they weren't alone. Uh, a lot of them kind of ran away, uh, but the Spartans decided to stay uh, and, and battle it out. Now here's what's happening here in this movie. They are leveraging something called a force multiplier. And the force multiplier is crucial to the Spartans' ability to hold off the Persians, who were many, many times uh, outnumbering them by the hundreds of thousands at times. Now, it probably wasn't 10 million Persians like it was in the movie or something like that, but they were strongly and staunchly outnumbered. Yet they were able to hold this army off for more than two days until that secret path was found and they got surrounded and obliterated. Now, why was that possible? It was possible because of the force multiplier of these walls basically saying, hey, if you want to come into Greece, you have to go through us and you can only send in a few at a time. And when you can only send in a few at a time, the Spartans, with their superior military training and skills and fearlessness, were able to hold off the inferior trained Persians, who were basically a bunch of farmers that were just doing whatever their god king told them to do. So that force multiplier basically says one Spartan had the strength of ten Spartans in this tunnel. That was the multiplier. So you bring one Persian and one Spartan together, the Spartan's going to win every time. You bring one Spartan and ten Persians into the hot gates, and the Spartan's probably still going to win because they have those superior skills, and the gates or the walls or the cliffs eliminate any numbers advantage because it increases the strength of the Spartan. So I, anyway, I don't want to get too detailed on this, but the idea is that movie is a good demonstration of what a force multiplier is and what it can do to create a strategic advantage. Now, I want you to start thinking about how do you apply that in your life? How do you apply that in your business? What are some force multipliers that you can put into place that are going to give you a strategic advantage, almost an unfair advantage? What are some things that you can do in your daily schedule that are going to make you 10 times more effective just by putting a task at a different time in the day, for instance. It's been said, and we're not going to dive into the science of this, and you can kind of look this up on your own, but it's been said that activities that require a lot of 
cerebral focus should be performed in the mornings and not necessarily in the afternoons. And activities that maybe are less mental and more physical can be performed in the afternoons because your brain gets tired really easily. So you can look up some different philosophies on that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you pay attention to the details that are presented to you and you find a way to create that force multiplier in your life. Here's another example. Uh, if you are a salesperson, one way to create sales is to walk through a neighborhood and knock on doors. Uh, that takes a lot of work, uh, but it is very effective. And I have lots of friends, colleagues who make an exceptional living knocking on doors, selling roofs, selling HVAC repair, uh, selling solar panels, selling cable, U-verse, whatever, all kinds of things. You make a great living doing that, but it's not very efficient. Lucrative, not efficient. So what if all of the houses in a particular neighborhood that could be interested and willing to purchase your service or whatever it is that you're selling were painted blue? What if somebody had walked through that neighborhood before you decided to go knock on doors and painted every house blue that contained the customer that was going to purchase your service? Would that create a force multiplier? Would that take the force of you walking through and knocking on those doors and multiply it by some enormous factor? Well, absolutely. Now, how do you do that? Like, you can't just go and, like, read minds and paint houses. That, you know, it's, it's a metaphor. <laughs> so keep in mind, it's, it's not, I'm not saying go buy a can of blue paint and start painting houses and they're going to start selling you things or, or they're going to start buying things from you. No, that's not how it works. But what if you had somebody go in front of you and knock on those doors on your behalf and qualify the neighborhood and say, you know, hey, these people aren't home. These people didn't answer. These people are interested. I'm going to send you a text. I'm going to call you right now. Come to this house. Talk to these guys. Now, that person who's knocking on the doors, a.k.a. painting the houses blue, that person doesn't necessarily need any amount of skill. They just need the willingness to be able to go and walk around a neighborhood and knock on doors and see who's home and ask them one simple question. Hey, we're in the neighborhood. We're talking about, uh, we're taking a look at people's roofs. I don't know. I don't sell roofs, but uh, there's, there's a qualifying question you can ask for anybody that answers the door. So if somebody answers the door and they answer your question in the way that you want it to be, then that person, that setter, that house painter, that house blue painter can notify you and say, hey, I just painted a house blue. Come check it out. And that multiplies your force extensively. Extensively is not even a word, but I was trying to say like extensively and exponentially and extensively came out. So you know what? I'm going to roll with it. Hashtag extensively. Put it out there on the socials. We're going to make it happen. So I want you to start thinking about what are the force multipliers that you can apply in your business, in your life, that are going to take the effort that you're putting in or out and multiply it by some factor because of what you're doing and what your environment says around you. The force multiplier is actually a military term in military science. Uh, I'll read you the definition here from Wikipedia. It says, in military science, force multiplication or a force multiplier refers to a factor or a combination of factors that gives personnel or weapons or other hardware the ability to accomplish greater feats than without it. Okay, think about that. It is a factor that gives you the ability to accomplish greater feats than if you did not have that factor. What can you do that will help you accomplish more things, better things, what can you apply? What can you add to your life? What can you add to your daily routine that is going to make you 10 times more effective than you normally are? Once you find it, you've got your force multiplier. That's going to do it for today. I really appreciate you joining me and checking out my solos. We'll see you next time.